Hello, Pod Smashers of the Internet, and welcome to another episode of Eighty Bit Pod Smash, where gaming goes to grab a beer. We are your hosts, Penguin and Termite. I'm Penguin, and I am Termite, and we are a weekly video game podcast, smashing together the ideas of video games with topics that you care about. Yeah, let's do that tink again because that was kind of yeah. Weak. There we go. That's better. That's a little better. Yeah. You gonna cut and paste that over the other one when you do some <laughs> editing so we can yep. work some magic? <laughs> Probably not, but you know. So the audience gets two tinks mm. for the price of none. Mm-hmm. How do you like that? What are we drinking today? Uh, you tell me, because this is your beer. Yeah, this, this is isn't like mine. you well, tell you me about it, this all but... the time, and then I saw it, and you keep telling me every time you mention it that I'm never gonna find it. You're like, good luck. You're not gonna find no, it. No, 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 no. So no, I walk no, in, no, 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 and sure no, enough, no, it's on no, the shelf. No, no, I told you you're not going to find Mav- Avery's Mephistopheles. That's the one you're worried about. That's the one that this you'll one? never find. Not huh? not good juju. Good juju is always this time of year. You'll find good juju in any proper beer store. Oh, well, there but you go. Avery's Mephistopheles is the one you'll never find. So what are we drinking? We are drinking Left Hand's Good Juju. <laughs> <laughs> and what is so good about this beer? I, you know what? Honestly, it was one of my favorite beers back when I started drinking beer again. Uh huh. Um, now, you know. <sighs> years later <laughs> however long it's been since i started drinking beer again i've had better i've had enough better beers that i wouldn't say that this is like necessarily my favorites but it still is like it's not only is it good not only do i still like it like the taste of it but it is still like nostalgic as to like oh yeah this was one of my favorite beers back in the day um it's a it's kind of a lager they actually describe it as a pale ale um but it's not I feel like it's got more of a lagery taste. Yeah, it does not. It tastes like a pilsner. Yeah. Um it's uh it's very low which nail, ABV, which is not typical for my taste. Mm-hmm. Um but what makes what sets good juju apart is it's an ale brewed with ginger. Yeah, ginger. So it's got a little bit of a ginger aftertaste. So it's not really a ginger beer. It's not a ginger beer in the sense that like Not at all. I don't hardly taste any ginger. Um it's got like a hint of ginger yeah. though. I taste it. It tastes yeah. like a to me it tastes like a lager. It tastes almost like a uh like if you were to take yingling and then like put hmm. ginger in it. That's kind of what it tastes like to me. Is it's got that kind of like just kind of beer flavor, <laughs> that kind of weedy flavor with also like a, a kind of like a it goes down and get ginger. Yeah, I always get ginger in the backwash, whatever you call it. Yeah, that. the back end. Back end. Yeah. Yeah. You the get backwash. ginger on the back end. Ginger on the backwash. That's gross. Let's see. Does it have a description on it? No, but they have an ingredient. Just list, says a cool. light bodied ale brewed with ginger to create a spicy aroma and a unique flavor. And I like the ingredients. Rocky Mountain water. Yeah. <laughs> Specifically water from the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> they actually have a stout version of this called Wicked Juju. Oh yeah. Uh and it's it's a stout with Is it better? ginger. Um I think I've only had it once. Um I remember liking it. I remember not disliking it. So um huh. But, but this is always like summer. This was my shower beer. Uh, I, at one point, I got like a case of this, like 40 beers for like 40 bucks. I um, got like a case of it from a local store when I was living in Harrisonburg. Yeah. And I would come home from a long, I remember it was summer. So I remember coming home from a long day's work. This is when I was living with my parents before before living with, uh, or before getting married. Yeah. Um, and I would come home, I'd get a good juju, and I would take a shower and just wash the day off of me. Ooh. <laughs> It was good. It was nice. So this is my shower beer. Sweet. Shower beer. Mm -hmm. And that's why we tink. Tonight's episode, we will be talking about voice chat, specifically a technology known as voice over IP or VoIP for short, which is Mm -hmm. what we will be referring to it probably most of the episode as. So we're going to be talking about how voice chat has changed gaming um, and the effects that that technology has had on our culture and the industry at large. Yep. It's, very, it's a very 80-bit pod smash topic. It is. <laughs> I think. It totally is. Um, and, uh, but yeah, before we get on to all that, what's going on? There's a lot to cover. There's a whole lot of stuff going <laughs> on. So we're going to have on. to like lightning round, talk about news and updates. Ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Yep. Well, the first thing you have on our list of things maybe to talk about is Avengers Endgame. Yep, that happened. I'll probably talk more about that in Favorite Things, so ah, we'll talk more about that. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to spoil Endgame for our listeners? I will try to avoid spoiling Endgame for our listeners. That's messed up. it's still pretty early. How so. about, well, today was a big, giant Borderlands gameplay reveal. Yeah. Event. So shout out to Greg Miller and Andrew Renee and Fran Marabella of Kind of Funny Games Cast fame that did the pre-show and the post-show analysis as well as spawned off their own like live gameplay streams throughout the, after the event. So it was like a 30-minute post or pre-show and then an hour-long reveal with um, 
Randy Pitchford at the helm kind of narrating their entire gameplay reveal, and then there was another like post-show and then some streaming after that. So they showed off everything about the game. Well, I guess not everything, because we're still, yeah, there's still jonesing questions. for more but details. But they said that they're going to be at like multiple yeah. events throughout the summer, so they'll probably like kind of slowly reveal things over time. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they, I was, there was a very specific thing I wanted them to talk about that they haven't yet, and so I was a wee bit like, oh man, I really wanted to know that one thing. But, like, once I started to read through the actual list of things that they, like, showed off, I was yeah. like, wow, they actually revealed a lot of information. They so, did. Yeah. There's so much information. Well, and I then was... before, even before the stream happened, uh, the their new Twitch extension, people data mined it yeah. and found the skill trees for mm-hmm. the two playable characters they had during the demo. So, for both Zane the Operative and Amara, mm-hmm. we were able to see their full skill trees. Yeah. And all the that that entails, which is awesome because I read through them and they're awesome. They're mm. sweet. Yeah, it seems like a lot of fun. And they, I like how they start off the entire thing because like this is a screenshot from the game. No, it's not. It's actually the <laughs> Kidding. game. Yeah, it was the first frame of the game, and, and then it started animating. And from the trailers, the graphics didn't look that much more improved. Yeah. But when you actually watch the gameplay, when you could see the animation, the animations to me stood out more than anything else. Yeah, it's the beautiful. art style is the same as Borderlands Two. The environment that we were shown today again they announced there's multiple planets and a mm-hmm. spaceship which is awesome uh sanctuary three what we were what we saw today was very very much like borderlands 2 plus plus as far as how the environment looked and yeah. the art style but the animations of everything how the guns weaved how the guns shot like their their re- the recoil all of yeah. the ui elements the the hit markers the health bars the way the numbers popped up like everything is just so much smoother and so much more animated and everything sounds better like the oh, sound the is sound better. So too. good. The uh, sound designer came on Twitter, or I think it was Twitter, or it was a, that, or it was an interview. And the sound designer for the game said that they have twenty-five times the number of gun sounds. Wow! In the game than Borderlands Two, so it's significant. Yeah, <laughs> and you can tell it sounds, was shown yeah. off. And, uh-huh. um, but overall, the game does feel like they've st- stuck to their roots. Mm-hmm. Even at the end, Randy Pitchford was like, we just want to make good games. Uh, you, there's a lot of stuff happening in the gaming industry right now. It's involving a lot of different ways to get money and make money and all these things. But at the heart of it all, they just want to make a really good video game. And then he went from there to say, like, there's no microtransactions. There's no free-to-play. Which is bull crap. awesome. Yep. Sounds amazing. There's And if you rewind back to the original announcement, he started off saying, this is not a Battle Royale game either. So... You can tell he's kind of taking stabs at the gaming industry right now and the practices that are happening regarding all of the loot boxes, microtransactions, and stuff. And he's kind of taking a step back and saying, we're not doing any of that. Yeah, we're not doing any of that. We're going to give you what making, you want. Yeah, we're making Borderlands game, but it's just going to be Borderlands game with more. Yeah. A lot of the sort of like, I mean, the guns look amazing. They do, and the they're so innovative. So Yeah, so cool. The skill trees look amazing. This is the way the skills look and feel for the characters look amazing. One thing that was confirmed that a lot of people were like wanting and asking for is having the vault hunters that you're playing as talk more and have unique dialogue that's mm-hmm. tailored to them, uh, which they more or less confirmed. They talk all the time, apparently. Yeah. They added sliding and vaulting, or whatever you call the right. um, mantle. And I imagine we'll is. we'll experience more of what that feels like when we play. Uh-huh. You know, seeing it on TV is one thing, but in the first couple of games, you really just feel like a ghost floating over the yeah. over the surface. You know, you do your long jump, and like, gravity's not as much as it is on Earth, so you jump a little higher. It kind of felt like Halo as far yep. as jumping, mm-hmm. but you didn't really have. It was really hard to platform in that game, and it they was, emphasized yeah. it too much yeah. in the old game. So it looks like they've rectified all that. Now you have like the Titanfall slash. Um, like Apex Legends style, like grabbing ledges and yeah. running parkour sliding type mm-hmm. things, yeah. which feels really, really good. It looks and good, And I hope yeah. it will when a game comes out, but yeah. we haven't played it yet, so we don't know. Yeah, they also said that they're having some of the zero gravity, they're having some of the planets or whatever have the low gravity like, oh, okay. like pre-sequel does, which, yeah. is, which is cool. So mm-hmm. it looks like, there'll be, looks like the way you move throughout the world might change depending on what world you go to, which is pretty cool. I think. Yeah. So yeah, this is a lot shown, a lot confirmed, and it looks fun looks so much fun so it really does um i'm very hyped for borderlands 3 i can't wait to find out more 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 about it Mm -hmm. uh i do i do really want to know the skill trees for the last two characters though Mm. because those are the two characters that i'm actually interested in playing right it was the beastmaster and the beastmaster and the jock bot or the bot jock Mm. um the uh flack Black and Moe's. Uh, the I mean, the characters they showed look great. Like Amara the Siren looks like I can't fun. wait to play Amara. Uh, I've already and, chosen her as my main. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what skill tree you're going to go down yet? Are you going to do the? I don't know. Are you going to do the phase lock? Or are you going to do the? I like the slam. The slam one, yeah. the brawl, the melee. Tree. I kind of like the slam. Looks good. I was really worried that like a melee siren. Like how would that play? Because mm-hmm. melee characters can be kind of hit or miss in Borderlands. Yeah. But it looks like she'll have plenty of ranged op- options even in her melee tree, which is pretty yeah. cool. So. 
Cool. All right. Uh, you want to talk about more info about the PS5? You're going to have to blast through it because I saw your like paragraph long notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of notes. I have a lot of thoughts, actually. There's nothing new that has been announced about the PlayStation 5 uh, from Mark Cerny's article on Wire that we talked about before, but it's more just reminiscing through it all and kind of putting it in context of things. I wanted to highlight one, a couple of new things. And one is when the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One had came out, they were announced in 2013. They were announced having as having the pc architecture and at the time that was mind-blowing because consoles had previously all the way up through the ps3 and xbox 360 operated on proprietary hardware and that required developers to compile code on that hardware and it was very difficult to port stuff around and that's why we saw the performance gap that we did between the ps3 and the xbox 360 for most of its early of that generation's early cycle so now we have what seemed like the PC to console gap, the smallest it's ever been with the PS4 and the Xbox One because they're all in the same architecture. So developers can make games and just move it over to the PlayStation and kind of tweak just like you would a PC with a weak graphics card. You could tweak your game to run on Xbox One, which is the weakest of all the consoles. And then we see this iterated even more with the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. We see them enhanced. And so we have these enhanced patches to the software, which is essentially like a PC game with a better graphics card turning up the sliders on the different stuff like level of detail and shadow and lighting. And so this is the first time now that we'll enter into an entire new console generation that is the next gen of that. It's still like PC based. And they've talked about things like ray tracing being incorporated, having 8K visuals, right? And so I was, I want to kind of muse and kind of, and and get your opinion on uh, PC hardware has always been in like the shadow of, uh, I'm sorry, console hardware has always been in the shadow of PC. Like PC's always kind of pushed the, the the limits, and it still is. But now, do you think that the PlayStation Five and the Xbox One X next thing, whatever you want to call it, do you think that will further close that gap between PC and console? And do you think developers will still like? What do you think that means for the future of PC gaming? I mean, uh, PC gaming is. not well, no, I'll tell you what the future of PC gaming is. It's it's the same as console gaming. Like, eventually, like, the cost of closing that gap, quote unquote, is mm-hmm. eventually with the architecture and everything being the same. Like, we're going to start to see a breakdown, I think, of the barriers between PC and console gaming. Yeah, that's exactly what I was highlighting. It's yeah. more so than we've already <laughs> seen that breakdown. Yeah. Because there was a massive difference in games like Crisis when they came out on PC or Battlefield. Okay, so if you go back, some very specific examples, Battlefield 2 and Counter-Strike, the console versions of those games were entirely different games. Yeah. They weren't even close to the same. It wasn't just a downgrade in graphics. Everything was different. The UI, how it felt, the menus, Everything was different. The storylines were even different. It was like, why would you even call this the same title? Because it's not even the same game. Where now, you see games come out like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and it's literally the same game across PC, PS4 Pro, and Xbox One X, except on PC, if you have the right hardware, you can run it at higher resolutions with better frame rates, right? So we already saw that gap shrink. So with the next generation, they're talking about 8K visuals and what that looks like. And they're talking about ray tracing. This is stuff that... The ray tracing is, uh, it's going to be overly marketed. It's going to be, people are going to call it gimmicky, but where it really is, is it allows reflections to exist on a surface that you can't see in the same screen space. Mm -hmm. So if you like look at a car in a city block, you have a car over in front of you and there's a fire around the corner that you can't currently see, you Mm -hmm. would see that fire's reflection in the car. That's Mm -hmm. ray tracing. Yeah. Uh, The hardware that they're talking about, and it's speculative for the PS5, doesn't even exist in current generation PCs right now, which means they're like way future-proofing. So if you think about Sony and Microsoft making deals with, with PC hardware manufacturers to get proprietary hardware mass-produced at a discounted price, do you think that they could come in ahead of the PC at a competitive price? Do you really? like? That's kind of what it's looking like. Eh, we'll see. I mean, they're still... There's still with at the rate at which hardware moves. Yeah, there's still two years before the PlayStation Five is probably going to come out. So we'll just have to see. I don't. I don't think that they're necessarily going to overtake PCs, but they might come as close as they've ever been. Right. Two PCs. It, so. Like every time a console comes out, they're like, "Oh, that's just the same as this computer that I can get for a couple hundred dollars more and have this much better features." Right. Maybe a console comes out; it's literally better than anything you can buy for a PC. 
at a way more competitive price because of the companies also take a loss on hardware. That's yeah. a known thing. So right. you take that into account, plus the mass producing proprietary hardware. They're like they don't have to market a video card. They're just marketing a PlayStation or an Xbox. So I'm really, really curious and super fascinated about what this next generation will look like because it is so different than any other generation switch we've seen in the past. I'm just curious what you thought. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. Is I we'll see. <laughs> all right. So, uh, what's next? That's all I have. That's good. For, yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Well, we like talking about hardware. It's one of our favorite things. <gasps> Doing, Doing this podcast, podcast is our favorite, favorite thing. thing. Doing this podcast is our favorite thing. Favorite things. What's your favorite thing for the day? Mine is this phone in my hand. Oh, that's right. You got a new one because I saw you like logging into all the 80-bit pod smash stuff. Yeah. And I got like alerts on my phone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which happened when you got yours too. Yeah, exactly. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. So I got a Google Pixel 3. They were on sale for half off for one day only with Google Fi only services. Oh, like cool. They had a four-year anniversary sale and so they just took Pixel 3s are all half off. My wife's phone was like cracked. Yeah, and we were already looking at changing phone plans or somehow getting a new phone, like investigating all of our options. So in termite fashion, I put together a spreadsheet consisting of T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, and Google Fi, and what prices they would all provide with unlimited data versus what Google Fi gives. Each of those other services, would I be able to bring my Pixel over? Would I be have to buy a new phone through them? Tons of research that I don't have to bore you guys with, but the half-off Pixel 3 sale was by far the best, and so we chose to do that. I ordered two Pixel 3s. We each got them, so now we have the same phone, and it is totally my favorite thing. Cool. There's so much about this phone that I did not know I would love, yeah. and one of them is the size. Like the regular, I went from a Pixel XL mm-hmm. down to a Pixel 3. The actual screen size is identical. But because they shrank the bezel, yeah. it's a smaller phone. This thing fits in my pocket easier. It, yeah. it fits in all the slots in my car when I'm driving. It's like it's so easy to, to hold and manipulate. And so like stupid things. I love like the tactile vibrations of typing and like how it switches between stuff. My old phone didn't do those things. And of course the camera, which is what they advertise, is like the best thing ever. So Sweet. Yeah, it's Good. fantastic. I nice. love my phone. I, I, it's always fun to get a new phone. It is. It's like one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah. <laughs> And with the way they're designed, it's almost like they encourage. I mean, they break easily for the like. They get slow and they get crappy. It feels like every like I feel like after a year, like I've had my phone for less than a year Mm -hmm. now, and I'm already starting. It's like it's like slowing down in some cases, and I'm like, yeah. (laughs) So well, software is always designed for the latest. Yeah, and so it trickle down effect. It's like you keep updating the hardware to focus, or I'm sorry, you keep updating the software to perform better on newer hardware. The yeah. older hardware can't keep up, yeah. and so eventually it's just going to die because yeah. of updates. Yeah. So it makes sense. Cool. All right. Uh, my favorite thing is Avengers. I liked it a lot. Endgame? Yeah. yeah. I, it, it, you know, it has some pretty glaring plot holes, but to me, the emotional beats mm-hmm. that they hit kind of outweigh those. Yeah. So there were a lot of good like emotional payoff moments. It was full of fan service, which again is usually typically seen as like a negative, but I'm like, come on, it's freaking the last movie. It's like the culmination of 22 movies worth of 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 stories like i think that it's fair to do a little bit of fan service yeah you know? so yeah so i i enjoyed it uh, i won't get any spoilers because it's still pretty early yep still it's fresh release, so even I'll, though this episode's two weeks out i'll avoid from it from its release date but it's fine yeah we'll give them some more time yeah we'll give them some more time. go back to our episode we talked about spoilers and we actually laid Zeker, out some yes. like yeah some what we thought were ground rules that we're not fair obeying right now rules, yeah yeah <laughs> so uh yeah that's my favorite thing so it was good i, I like teared up some yeah, moments me too so, it was good one stuff. moment yeah. i teared up one and a half moments i like welled up tears on multiple occasions yeah. but only one moment caused the actual tear to go down my cheek and i had the if you just lower the effect I had no tears at all in my eyes except for one scene, and they never dripped. It was just in my eyes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, that's favorite things. Yay. Now we can move on to the next segment of our podcast, which is <gasps> DLC. Downloadable content is the next segment of our podcast where we have a little mini discussion, something that you wouldn't normally have around video games. Uh, and, and our names are both Dan. And our names are both Dan. That's why it's downloadable. Yeah. That's right. We explain all that in our Earlier episode episodes. zero and like several episodes here and there. Yep. Cool. So today's downloadable content is uh, we're talking about a technology that's not necessarily a video game technology that has changed video games. So I wanted to talk about other technologies. I want to kind of like do a hypothetical. What is a relatively new technology? So we're talking past 15 or 10, or sorry, 15 or 20 years that you are surprised has not been incorporated into gaming. So something that you think would have gaming applications that has not been incorporated. I know you 
lamented to me earlier that you had one this yeah, morning, and then like, you, you got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, want to chip me with it? Sure. So the one of the, I don't know if you call it a technology, but social media has existed now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Social media is not really used in any video game. Yeah, they you can like, talk about games tried. on social media. Ride. There are some things like like wow, you were able to like, like I don't know. You could like link your Facebook account, like take screenshots in. I wow, don't count that. Then, okay, all right, that doesn't count. Yeah, there's an engine behind social media that mm-hmm. has to do with like sharing like big data. It's like monitoring the clicks, likes, shares, and the mm-hmm. follows with the hashtags and yeah. like their profile that's set up and the trends and the links that are set up between people and profiles where everyone's like X amount of dimensions, not dimension. What's the word I'm looking for? Your X layers apart from each other. There's a way you, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you mean. Yeah. Ah, it's degrees, like, degrees, degrees. Of yes. Yeah. Your X degrees from a separation from everyone else on the internet. And I think death stranding is supposedly the first game that's talking about. It. So it's kind of a cheat answer because I've already had that thought in, in okay. into my head. Um, He's talking about, like, Hideo Kojima is talking about using social media type mentalities where everyone's connected. And it shows a video game, Death Stranding, where you're by your, you're completely isolated, but the entire game is about connections. Interesting. And we don't know enough because he's ridiculously coded when he talks. Like, everything is enigmatic and you have no idea what's going on. But yeah, because that's Hideo Kojima for you. But just like leveraging the power behind uh, social media connections and relationships in a video game fundamentally from its design. Yeah. I don't even know what that would look like. That right. blows my mind. I was say, the closest thing, the closest thing I could think that you're talking, the closest thing to what you're talking about would be like Twitch streaming. Right. But even then, that's not the game. The game itself has nothing to do with Twitch streaming. It's just a like gaming culture. Right. Social media platform. They're playing games on Twitch. Yeah. As opposed to the Twitch is like in the game. Yeah. Or something. I don't something even know. About, yeah, exactly. And yeah, so I always cool. like, I found myself thinking and musing about these things and I don't, I don't know what that would look like at all. Um, mm. But if you did something on your phone on social media that fundamentally affected a video game would be awesome. Yeah. And it's never been done. So that's mine. Yeah. Something I'm surprised hasn't really made its way into mainstream gaming. I'm sure there are games that utilize this technology, but I'm surprised that voice to text or text vo- like text recognition or sorry yeah. no voice recognition mm. software hasn't really been used there's so many applications you could you could use in games yeah we have um, all this alexa google home and all these smart yeah, like, voice like, devices being able like, the fact that we can't like control a game with our voice yet yeah. is surprising to me mm. it's genuinely surprising to me because like that would be such an interesting like again even just as a, a gimmicky like i can see nintendo doing something like that but like a gimmicky game where they just like i mean we can like you can record your voice like that, there's as we're talking about today. Obviously, games can pick up your voice. So just having software in there, like built into the game, to recognize voice chat would make mm-hmm. for an really interesting. I can imagine it being really interesting for like a like a horror game experience too. Like imagine all you have to do to control your character is like voice commands and like a horror. Oh game. yeah, there's, there's so they'd be like game. run, yeah. run, run. Yep. <laughs> would be um, like I think it would be a really fun game. Stop talking and nobody explodes, uh, yeah. or something like that, or keep talking and nobody explodes. I believe is a game that. We, I was told by a friend, Matt, yeah. or a friend of our show, who's, who's, it's about that. Like, it uses your voice to do stuff, but it's not a mainstream game. It's a little yeah, indie exactly. title. That's what I mean. Big... Even Hideo Kojima's PT uses the voice through the microphone. Right, to, just like, a little, barely a little yeah, bit. Yeah, at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see, I would like to see that kind of really hit and, and be... That we should be, be able really to do that. I wonder if Borderlands 3 will do that. Yeah. You can be like, hey, Google. No, it's not. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Uh, I mean, I could see it do, being interesting in, like, in like certain... Um, Alexa! Like, can you imagine Maybe there's like a, a character Alexa that you have to talk to through your microphone and it's a big troll because everyone who be owns awesome. Alexa's yeah. in their house that would be awesome <laughs> be funny. they should totally do that yeah all right uh that's the LC for the day all right let's move on to our main topic we are talking about voip 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 it looks like voip I don't know, just I read it as but I know it's voip voip <laughs> that's like the French way of pronouncing it huh voip voip what is v o i p and how is it different from regular telephony? Uh, so VOIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. And the definition that I read on Wikipedia was the methodology and technologies for the delivery of voice communication over IP, a la Internet Protocol, networks. Yeah. So if you look at a difference between a telephone, an old school telephone, that's mm-hmm. like 
the uh, the dial tone telephone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like beep, the, boop, beep, boop, 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 like literally plugging right? things in. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's telephone. And then voice over IP is like you have a microphone hooked up to your computer that's talking over the internet. Mm-hmm. And they even have phones that use that, but that's a different, that's more technical. I mean, essentially it's that, but... sending your voice over little packets, but it's sending it at such a, it's yeah. sending the voice data at such a rapid rate because we have such high speeds mm-hmm. of packet and transmission receiving it, puts it all together, orders it all, and then you yeah. plays it back. So yeah. it looks like you're talking on the telephone. It sounds like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be, I mean, it's pretty much live. Mm-hmm. Like the de- there is a delay, obviously a slight delay, but it's not noticeable enough to like when you're playing a game and talking over voice chat, the things that you say to me are fast enough that I can usually react mm-hmm. to what you're saying. In, in the context the of a video game that's yeah. happening live mm-hmm. in front of you. Exactly. So yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. So it's fast enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, I mean, most people, most people listening to this are probably our age and are very familiar with how voice over IP Well, maybe works. they haven't thought about it. Right, yeah. Distinguishing it from old cell phone technology mm-hmm. or old telephone technology. Well, but even like, it's even slightly different from like digital telephony. Mm-hmm. So like, it's even technically different from, because you don't, what makes it different from, you know, me just calling you and us talking over the phone while playing games is we don't have to go through a provider. Right. It's all done. It's all done through the internet mm-hmm. what's revolutionary about the technology is again you can practically make phone calls for free right like you don't have to like I mean, the the point at which it is now you don't have to no one has to pay for anything really to use yeah it. landlines are like dying yeah it's a dying thing mm-hmm. and they try to isps internet service providers they try to bundle the landline in with their internet yeah, package it. it's and it's ridiculous yeah. so most people just have cell phones now and like older folks have landlines and they swear by them uh, maybe they're more reliable. I don't think so now. At the at the onset of VoIP, yes, landlines were more reliable. But mm-hmm. now it's the internet's yeah, reliable enough insane. that yeah, yeah. Unless you live in like a rural area, then there's mm-hmm. no reason. Um, but even you know, again, it even differs slightly from cell phones. Right. Like it's the same basic principles, but it's different. Like technically, you could like I mean, the fact that I can use VoIP on my computer, so I can have a conversation on my computer as opposed to, or in the case of playstation and xbox it's built into those Mm -hmm. those systems you don't need to there's no reason to like go through a cell phone provider right in order to and again so that brings up like data there's implications on data Mm -hmm. so you know voip itself is a very it's gonna use data yeah yep yeah whereas phone calls don't yeah it's different Mm -hmm. and i know with google fi is he that's my uh cell phone provider uh i know when you're on a Wi-Fi network that's reliable, it will automatically use a will quote Wi-Fi phone call. Yeah. That's VoIP. Mm-hmm. If you don't use a Wi-Fi phone call, it's not VoIP. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the difference. Yeah. You're using your cell network, which is more in line with old school landline yep. phones, but cool. wireless. All right. So as most why things does are... this matter? Why are we talking about this? <laughs> yeah. Why does it matter? Why are we talking about this? Well, let's first like hit what are the kind of major apps. Because that's what everything's done. That's what everything is these days. What are the apps that that are VoIP apps, um, and how have they changed over time? So how has this technology changed over time? So the popular ones that I remember from the old days, mm-hmm. <laughs> the late two thousands, yep. um, were Ventrilo and Teamspeak. What, do they still are they still I think around? So I think yeah. they're still around. Those are the two I used as well. Yeah. the 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 big deal about Ventrilo and Teamspeak. This is, again, this is late two thousand, so the technology was still mm-hmm. not the most afford. I mean, the most affordable is now free, as mm-hmm. we'll talk about. But uh, uh, at the time, you actually you had to someone had to buy a Ventrilo or a Teamspeak server. So those so they're actually you know I actually think we me and my friend bought one at one point. We bought a Ventrilo server, and it was like ninety nine bucks. So like nine really? bucks for a ye- for the year, yeah. But still, like, I didn't know you actually bought that. That's yeah. Funny. So you have to buy. So you had to buy it, and then you had to give everybody basically the server name so they could connect to it. So, like the average person, you know, I would bum off of most people's existing servers, but someone had to buy a Ventrilo server. Well, we had someone that hosted one locally on their own machine and yeah. with a VPN. And we oh, just nice. connected to that. Cool. So eventually, Skype came out and kind of. From there, like Skype was a free app. You yeah, it was kind VoIP. of the mainstream. Like that was VoIP's mainstream. Yeah. I mean, and, and Skype is also known for video chat as mm-hmm. well. But video chat is basically the same thing as VoIP, just with picture video. and mm-hmm. image. Yeah, and you can also just make regular VoIP calls over yeah. Skype as well if you don't want to. So with that coming out, it was kind of inevitable. Skype wasn't necessarily designed for games like Ventrilo and Teamspeak were, but it kind of it was only a matter of time before a game-focused 
VoIP application kind of came out. Yeah. And so we saw that then with Discord. Discord mm, has now become one. the most modern standard. It is 100% free for the users, and you can just voice chat. You can, again, there are little servers. People can hop on. Anybody can join you as long as they have, like, as long as it's a public server, anybody can hop onto it. So now there's entire communities based around VoIP. Yeah. Where people just get on. And then there's it's got built-in text chat, too. So if you don't want to allow people random Joe Schmoes to hop on your channel mm-hmm. and start speaking, you can have that disabled for only certain users, and then your audience or whatever could engage with you. Yeah. So it's a it's a more robust platform than just VoIP, but it's built in off mm-hmm. of um, VoIP. So um, obviously there's built-in VoIPs for many platforms as well. So Steam has its own VoIP built in. Blizzard, Battle.net has its own VoIP built in. PlayStation and Xbox obviously have their own VoIPs. Twitch is I a mean, VoIP platform now. With consoles, Microsoft started it with the mm-hmm. original Microsoft and Xbox yeah. Live. And when Halo 2, uh, around that time, that's when the, you could buy a microphone that would plug into your controller. And it was revolutionary. It never happened in the console space before. And you could have live chat with, with people online. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Because you didn't have to like line up yeah uh, do you use TeamSpeak? okay do you use ventrilo okay i'm gonna call you on my phone and i'm gonna figure out what ip address to set up my my ventrilo to okay i connected oh, i don't have access Can, yeah. and there's like this three Can hour you move process me down into the yeah mm-hmm. and it was ridiculous and convoluted and stupid and with xbox it was just plug in join a party okay me and my buddies are friends we're gonna play awesome let's go and we're playing we're talking all night long we're jumping between games we add and remove friends from the party and it was just like this streamlined super easy experience that laid the foundation for all consoles so now you know ps4 mm-hmm. is it has it xbox 360 had it playstation 3 didn't which was mm. they improved it later yeah. it took a while but um so so we had that in the console space i love it there and it's and we still see some weird hangups, which is why I included another like category. Is like Nintendo Switch's way of oh, doing gosh, VoIP. Why is Nintendo so bad? It's a phone app yeah. that you download, and then it only works with certain games. And you have to like, don't you have to be like playing the game? Like you have to actually like like start a party in the game, and then it enables the VoIP. I, I've never used it. I have it's, no idea. It's yeah, I've never used it either. But it's it's very very dumb. A uh, very very bad way of doing VoIP, mm. uh, but it's through the phone, so it's like a phone. So it's it's entirely it's its own category of like phone based. I mean, there are other like you can get most of those VoIP apps that we talked about, Skype and and Discord. Yeah, you can use those through your phone. I have used them through mm-hmm. my phone as well, but that's like oh, I'm not at my computer right now. I'm gonna hop on and talk to my people on Discord. Whereas, like, Nintendo yeah. Switch is like, this is our entire VoIP built-in platform. <laughs> right. So if you're going to play games online with Switch, just use Discord. Yeah, and I was exactly. going to say, they've improved from the Ventrilo, TeamSpeak, you know, like, PC stuff to Discord. Now it is a social media platform. So 80-Bit Podsmash has a Discord. You guys can jump in and chat with us while yeah, we're we playing. we don't really advertise that. We, well, we, we don't, don't really use it. So right. <laughs> well, we should. Oh, we could. I mean, if yeah. we're ever playing games online, anyone can jump in and join us. Whether we're playing on PC, PlayStation, Switch, or Xbox, it doesn't matter. So that's massive improvement but it took 10 years to get there Mm -hmm. yep cool well now let's get into the meat of this like what what has this why are we talking about this with games why are we a gaming podcast talking about voip how has voip had an effect on gaming so i mean originally before you could talk to each other live online you could only type to each other online and And so even then that was only for mmos pc PC, exactly Yeah, yeah yeah There was definitely no typing to each other on a console Mm -hmm. at all. Uh, So on the console space, it's irrelevant. But I remember I learned how to burst type. And it actually affected my AOL. Do you remember AOL? Oh, my god! The instant messenger. Yeah, AIM. It was so good. I would play (laughs) Counter-Strike online back before Steam was a thing. And there was chat-enabled stuff, but you had to buy a headset. And it was a little confusing. And I was too young to jump through those hoops. So I just typed. And I remember, like, this is a live game. Things yeah. are happening, and I need to communicate with my team. And there were some shortcuts about, like, you know, go here or yes, affirmative, negative, you know, like, easy things you could say just to, to communicate quickly. So it was good good game design there. But I remember, like, hitting a T to type and then hit, and typing as fast as I could and pressing enter and then getting back to the keyboard oh and mouse. Oh, my gosh. And, like, I got so used to that that my AOL chat habits were terrible because I would, like, half thoughts would fly out, and it would take, like – four or five messages and you might even know that in my texting now to this day my texting and facebook messaging if you like if you just wait i'm probably going to send more information or clarify 
it's it's always like three or four messages to get one out mostly i mean i think i've gotten better but yeah i do i mean i do the same thing though like i'll be like here's a thought here's a thought here's a thought here's a thought and those will all be separate messages right but, but you got to read them all together yeah to make one thought yeah yeah, yeah. but, but how, how someone it? interrupts you and it's like oh well i'm in the middle of my thought <laughs> yeah. hold on let me answer that question as well uh i know i do the same thing but how has it changed gaming in general uh at the time games were not designed fundamentally from their from their design perspective made to include that community establishment like the connections between people and now they are mm-hmm. uh, so it's implied that you can talk to each fallout 76 would not exist to if you didn't have voice chat yeah and that's a completely online game the whole games as a service movement the whole looter shooter movement none of that would exist without without voice over ip yeah i mean i would go as far to say as like esports wouldn't exist yeah. without voice over ip like the the ability to communicate and coordinate over using your voice mm-hmm. with people changed everything in regards to what was possible with coordination and teamwork Mm -hmm. if you don't have to type everything out or worse just there's no means of communication then every game has to be i would even say that it's affected the pace at which games can be designed yeah because if you can't if you can't communicate at all then that affects the that affects the ability to strategize like you have to strategize using things like i mean it's like no whatever like character movements like right. if i jump Emotes. three times this means i want you to do this you know what i mean right. so it it becomes everything becomes slower real really really so being able to communicate real time made it so that games competitive games specifically could be designed faster paced mm-hmm. with because the implication was i mean someday in the future we might be able to just directly transmit thoughts to each other in which case <laughs> yeah. then the games will become even faster because there, so there's a limit <laughs> as to how fast games can be with right. voice chat but I don't know. I mean, I would say it's the fa- it's the it's the effect that voice chat has had on gaming would be the same to a lesser like severity, but to the same like degree in regards to strategy that like voice chat radio had to the military mm-hmm. movements. Being able to communicate directly with every individual unit and say, "Hey, we need you to do this. Move this way. Move three steps to your left and fire." <laughs> like. Yeah. Like that changed the way that strategies could be employed mm-hmm. real time. Um, I would say that same effect has been had on games. So games are faster paced now. Yep. They're they're able to have a capacity for greater strategy and strategicness. So meta games strategery. evolved. Strategery. Uh, meta games evolved as a result of voice over IP. And uh, and then the natural evolution from there was esports became a thing. People players got so mm-hmm. good at teamwork and playing together that it created a whole new competitive competitive money-making phenomenon yeah <laughs> so voice over ip really i mean it seems like such a small tangential thing but really i think we it's take bad. it for granted totally yeah today and it's not something that you see you don't see people as far as i know uh, maybe maybe there's some nerd out there who has written this but like i don't see like analyses or like articles written about like the effects of voip on mm-hmm. the gaming industry like it's it's just one of those things that's kind of taken, it's like you said, it's taken now. for granted. It's yeah. just kind of expected. It was kind mm-hmm. of evolved in the background, but has had substantial effects on the end results. Right. So maybe these things would have happened without it. And maybe it's just sort of a natural, like, of course, this was bound to happen at some point. Mm-hmm. But it still doesn't change the fact that its existence and the hard work that people, engineers, went into creating this and developers went into creating these things. I mean, even just like the Xbox was ahead of its time in it regards was. to VoIP. Absolutely. Like, yeah. The fact that it had such a streamlined way of doing it, yep. like really, again, you take it for granted, but at the time on the, you know, the competitive level, like the or comparative level with PCs, right. you had to go through all this rigmarole. I remember having to log into people, random people's ventral servers to uh-huh. do World of Warcraft raids. Like, yep. It was a pain it's in the butt. Not fun. So, and then communicating that information to all your friends who are in the raid, mm-hmm. twenty-five people. Yeah, I mean, I would remember you join a guild, or or guilds used to be able to set up messages of the day, yeah. and the event server info would be in the message yep. of the day. <laughs> yeah. So that way, if people were like, "What's your event information?" Be like, "Look at the guild yeah. info. Like, look at the guild. It's there the for day. you. Yeah, exactly. So type in mm-hmm. up so. to twelve digits of numbers <laughs> and a port number. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it really has like the hard work that went into making it what it is today is like again kind of taken for granted like you said yeah you just helped me realize that on the i thought the pc chat world was still like that i've had old school memories of it and discord really is i mean i'm the one that said it earlier that <laughs> discord is the the answer to that and they actually it actually streamlined and that's pretty sweet mm-hmm. well skype started it like yeah. i said i mean i mean skype has its own pitfalls right but 
like really i remember i remember making the switch to just being like let's get on skype guys and then like things other alternate more gaming focused alternatives came out like curse was around for a while Mm -hmm. then curse got absorbed by twitch so now it's just twitch's platform um but nevertheless like it was that idea of like it just became yeah i remember i remember and it was perfectly timed too because it was, it was at a point in time in my life where i was like i don't want to deal with all this ventral team speed crap like i just want to be able to just hey you i'm gonna invite you in this voice chat session yep. oh you're on too let me let pull you in let's play right. voice chat and play diablo together like that's and that's what we did we played we'd all get on curse and we'd play diablo or skype yep. and we'd play diablo um and now it's built into battle net and steam mm-hmm. yep or discord and they've gotten better too <laughs> i remember i remember battle Net rolled out voip I want to say Burning Crusade, maybe Wrath of Lich King, like that early yeah. into WoW's history, but it was so bad. Yeah, like no it was so it. crappy quality yeah. that people just continued to use Vent or mm-hmm. or TeamSpeak. So I remember they, they've they tried to implement it, but it's gotten, it, it has gotten better mm-hmm. over the years. And Steam's too has gotten a lot better as well. Yeah. So, uh, all right. Next question. What are some of the well? So speaking of pitfalls of VoIP, uh, what are what are <laughs> what some pitfalls? of those pitfalls? What are those? Uh, what are what are what are the pitfalls of VoIP implementation in games? In games, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sharing our notes. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, pitfalls. I was thinking more broad spectrum sure. with this question. Yeah, go ahead. I was thinking of like the social aspects of gaming mm-hmm. in general. Yeah, that's totally fine. Uh, putting hours into gaming and its social consequences. Mm-hmm. Like you're spending hours and hours and hours not hanging out with people in the bars mm-hmm. or going mm-hmm. out with folks to watch movies. You're playing games with them and you're behind a screen. Yes, you're talking to them, but like it's not that face-to-face interaction and you're not, yeah. I mean, you are experiencing something together, which is a good thing, but you're not with them physically. And like, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, People are using microphones in public gaming session or settings less and less frequently. So, like, you hear the whole term about, like, I don't want to play with randos. You know, like, yeah. Fallout 76, I join a server, there's 23 other people in it. I'm not, I, I mute my mic. I'm, I'm by myself. I don't want to talk to folks. But if I were to go somewhere physically with 23 other people and we were all doing, like, an escape room together, mm-hmm. I would talk to them because yeah. you have to. Yeah. Uh, so like, Even if you were, like, at a, a Smash tournament, you'd probably start talking to people and make friends. You know yeah. what I mean? Like... It's and, just, and I'm the same way. Like I'm, I'm incredibly VoIP shy these days. I used to like, I love getting on VoIP with people, strangers, and talking to them and getting to know them. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to me, but yeah. like, who hurt you? Who hurt you, Penguin? Uh, well, we're because both I'm extroverts. the same. Yeah. And I thought maybe it was an extrovert introvert thing. No, but like, we're both extroverts, and I'm the same way. I'm VoIP shy. Like yeah. I don't, I don't want to t- like Anthem. Never got on VoIP with mm-hmm. randos. You know, I only ever really get. On, I do love that's you know that said. I do love VoIP. When I'm with friends, like when I can get, when I can convince you or my friend Justin or someone to spend time with me on, on Borderlands or whatever, and we mm-hmm. get out, we get on voice chat and I'm like, oh yeah, this is right. the best. I love everything about this, mm-hmm. but I would never do that same thing with randos. I would never like find a group of people. I see people on Reddit, on various subreddits. I'd be like, hey, does anybody want to play this game with right. me? And then they'll like share their Twitch information mm-hmm. and then like, and they'll get, presumably get on voice chat with one another, complete strangers up to that point. Yeah. I'm like, I would never do that. Yeah. And it's and, weird because, again, I consider myself a pretty social person. I consider myself, I'm actually an extrovert. So I'm like, I get energy from like, oh, we know, meeting and getting to know people. But I just find it weird that like I've gotten to this point with online interactions that I just don't want to put that energy forward. Mm-hmm. There's something, I guess it's that it's, it's the same kind of idea as like I talk to random or I used to talk to random people on the phones all day and there's that kind of idea of like are you gonna be a jerk like are you gonna be a person that i actually get along with and i'd rather just avoid that altogether i'd rather just avoid like i would i I would rather risk not meeting any cool people to not have to deal with crappy people online i think that's what it is it's the only thing i can think of so you have like a weird fear of toxicity it's not (laughs) i guess so it's just or or not fear but just wanting to avoid it altogether Mm -hmm. like i just don't want to be bothered by it i want to play a game to have fun to relax to unwind yeah i don't want to introduce a new stress into my evening just because Mm -hmm. especially when your gaming time is so limited yeah the last thing you want to do is have a bad experience with someone online and so then that that whole idea of like extrovert versus introvert i was thinking of Okay, so if people are going out less because they're able to kind of get the social aspects of life, of human nature that's required by us through gaming, which is very controlled and very intentional based on what we just said, right? Mm -hmm. We're not playing with randos. We have a collection of friends. We're hanging out with them online. We're playing games with them more and more, and we're not going out with them or experiencing things with them. Do extroverts still go out? 
do introverts naturally gravitate towards gaming? So do, is there like a greater population mm-hmm. of introverts on the as the randos that we that we're talking to, and so they already have the walls up? And like, it's just this fascinating kind of pitfall. It's almost I, worth its own topic. Yeah, kind of kind of trying to sort all that out. Yeah, yeah. and we might have another topic about all yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so that, those are kind of the pitfalls of of the social aspect. It's so easy now. It's yeah. so like accessible that you can control it and make it intentional where in the past you kind of needed like you had to have your if you're going to play counter-strike for example it's like four versus four or halo four versus four you were in a group of randos you needed to communicate with them if you wanted to win and you wanted to win to boost your stats and so you had to communicate with them but now it's like i don't even play the four versus four with randos i only play the four versus four when i have three other friends that mm-hmm. I'm friends with that I yeah. want to talk to. And that kind of goes back to Anthem. It's like, do you squat up with, with a random group? No. You only squat up when you have friends. Well, you have to with a ra- well, Anthem because you can't. If you queue up solo, it's going to place you with. You just won't be in voice chat with them if that makes right. sense. Yeah. So it still limits you yeah. from a gameplay perspective. You, you can't do the, the strongholds or whatever they yeah. call it at the end because you don't want to play with randos. Yeah, or it's... you can play with randos and do the strongholds. <laughs> the strongholds ended up being easy enough that you actually didn't well, need to that's, coordinate that's not the chat. But, yeah, but, but you know, it, it does, you, you, now that we're getting into gameplay and talking about that, it does bring up some like really interesting design things. And Anthem is a really interesting case study because it was a game that was touted as being something where you needed to... like. Like the story was so good, you'll want to you'll want to pay attention to the story. But when you're actually doing the missions, you were then grouped with people, and the implication was, oh, well, you'd be on voice chat with one another. So if you want to pay attention to the story, you have two options: either you just play the story by yourself without voice chat and mm-hmm. not listen, or you get on with your friends to have a good time and potentially miss story. And right. A game shouldn't force you to make that choice. Um, but, you know, again, even the same criticism you could say about Borderlands. I oh, had yeah. a friend who said that they hated playing Borderlands with, they hated playing co-op Borderlands with their friends because they always missed the story mm-hmm. and the jokes and stuff like that because right. people were talking. So you have to consider that when you're designing your game and yeah. implementing voice chat into it. Do you, you know, uh, is it important to like you as a developer to convey a story like when are you conveying story when is it okay to be like okay shush, the cinematic like usually everybody can agree hey cinematic's happening let's all be quiet but when you're giving exposition and when you're giving story mm-hmm. in the actual gameplay that also requires you to coordinate do you mute all your friends yeah exactly you could so. be that guy hey guys i'm listening to the story mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so there's all and then of course yeah like and that's that's just we're, we're just talking about cooperative spaces there like that's not even mentioning like game design as it applies to using void for competitive yeah like i mean i think it's a given now that if you're going to actually compete in a competitive game mm-hmm. at any high level you have to be on voice chat yep so and- that that brings up do you have a team do you have a squad of friends i mean probably is like if you really want to compete at like an esports level then yeah you'd be involved with a team but then it's like okay well to get better do you get a voice chat with randos like and that's the decision every gamer has to make for themselves mm-hmm. but it is something i think that developers still need to kind of consider they should as a pitfall or not and like, then that's a good segue we're talking about playing in groups with randos that you're required to we have Kristen Cardino. What's her name? That's yeah, a whore. Yeah. Yes, nailed Shut up, it. Kristen. Shut up, Kristen. Shout go, out. Go hit her up um, on YouTube and Facebook or uh, Instagram. Yeah, and she was Twitter, uh, everywhere. <laughs> Context: She was in a couple of our episodes. We did a couple yes. of interviews with her. So uh, she talked about how in Overwatch she was immediately like discredited, disregarded, disregarded yeah. as a player because she's a female. Mm-hmm. But she needed to use voice chat to communicate with her squad to play, to well. play yeah. well, and she couldn't because now they were not paying attention to her or would leave. Yeah. And like, that's a whole other pitfall of yep. so toxicity, toxicity is a huge problem, which we've also touched on in previous episodes yep. of this podcast. And voice chat just opens up a whole different platform Can of worms yeah. for people for, to be jerks on. Yeah. yeah and yeah. we had the whole eight chan debacle with, um, what's that, that whole thing that THQ happened. THQ Nordic. THQ Nordic's dude yeah. talking about what game was they, were they promoting on it that I was interested in? Was it dark siders three? No. Newer. Bio, Bio Mutant? No. No? I don't no, remember. No. Yeah. But THQ Nordic decided they would go on to 8chan and have this AMA, Ask Me Anything, and it was a horrible decision. But the fact that you can... That's just one scenario you can replicate in VoIP. Yeah. So it gives people like the alt-right and the Nazis and the, the mm, really bad, like, ideas. the toxic people on the internet, they now have a place to have their voice heard. And they, yeah. can, they can actually treat people badly. They can get others to also treat people badly. Well, I'm just thinking about the amount of racial slurs and, yeah. and homophobic slurs and just all the, like, just 
to- well, just toxic is the only way to describe it. The the only adjective that we have for this, a toxic language that is just used so freely in video game spaces over VoIP that mm-hmm. it's created a subculture of its own that where people of all ages will say things over voice chat that they would never say in person to yep. someone. So it's because yeah. it's because it also has that removal like. Oh, I'm. I have this sort of wall of anonymity between me yep. and the people. It, it creates a false sense of security. Yeah, yeah. exactly. A, a, a false sense of security that also is again. It kind of reveals who you truly are. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like this is what you would say to people if you didn't have to fear repercussions, right? And that, so that's really, again, that begs the question, is that really who you are? Like, is mm-hmm. that it, it, the person you are when nobody's looking or whatever? Like right. those cliches, but like they're kind of true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Toxicity, toxicity, bad. I think of a, a kind of a good, a game that clearly is still meant to be played with a VoIP, but also took into consideration the fact that some people are shy on VoIP mm-hmm. was Apex Legends. Yeah. Their ping system was revolutionary. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think you're going to see more and more games implement that as sure. kind of an alternative to voice chat. We're seeing was, the, the emotes too. Yeah. It was the, very... Fallout 76 side mm-hmm, and yeah. all the different types of emotes. It's very... Ro- it's like, everything. Games are starting to kind of innovate around the fact mm-hmm. that some people don't want to get on VoIP, but yep. still want to be able to communicate effectively yep. with their teammates are willing to take the hit that, you know, it's not going to be as effective as VoIP, but, you know, I'm willing to make that trade off. <laughs> yep. uh, so that's kind of an interesting way that we're seeing people work around it. But yeah, um, cool. We had another question, I think. Oh, it's yeah. Our usual it's question. The usual question we finish with, what do you think the future of voice chat will be? I kind of actually, I think that, well, you know, as kind of a first step, since I just kind of segued off of that last point mm-hmm. I made, I think we will see more games allow us to work around not using VoIP like Apex mm-hmm. did. So yeah. I think we'll see that ping system include incorporated into more games. But the actual voice chat itself, what do you think? What do you think is is there a future beyond just what it is now? I don't know. It's pretty pretty cut and dry, right? You want to yeah. talk to someone. <laughs> it's you have you already have the quality of life things there. You you can have press to talk, you have muting, uh blocking and banning are already there. I mean it's just like how else can you better convey your voice to someone over the internet? I mean, we touched about text to voice, maybe in a, in a, in in an accessibility way for those who have speech impediments or can't talk or don't feel comfortable talking but can type or vice versa. Maybe implementing systems in the games that like will read text to you or like translate what people are saying to text if you're deaf and you can't hear them. So like maybe making advances in that space mm-hmm. well, voice, could be the future. Vocal recognition as well, I think, has a lot of applications that could be useful. Yeah. Like, if there's a software in place to recognize when people are being toxic, like, recognize what is toxic mm-hmm. language, what are toxic behaviors. That would, you know, you have to kind of, a combination of vo- vocal recognition and AI yeah. to kind of suss that out and be able to, like, live take action against players. Yep. Um, again, I mean, it brings up questions of, like, privacy, like... All right, if if mm-hmm. people are like, the, essentially it would be a computer that's monitoring all yeah. voice communication. Some algorithm but... that's out there, it's just like all of the voice chats going through it. Mm-hmm. And if just like a voice, or I'm sorry, just like a typing filter in a chat room, yeah. like you can get banned easy by just saying and typing the wrong things. Wrong things. Uh, it, yeah, over voice, that would be awesome. I would love that. Yeah, I think that it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a no, Faustian bargain. Like I, I can definitely see downsides and drawbacks to that. Mm-hmm. But like... <laughs> If you are sitting there and hearing us talk about this and that's your horror story, thinking that the quote unquote man is listening to your voice (laughs) chats, maybe do your part to try to end toxicity the normal way, which is just like calling people out or don't do it if you're participating (laughs) in it. And then there's no need for this. You know what I mean? Like the measure is the measure is taken because the behavior is so bad that a measure has to be implemented. Mm-hmm. If we all just sort of like stop being toxic to one another, then the man doesn't have to listen and right <laughs> to our voice chats. Yep. So yeah, I think that that's, yeah. So again, I, I do think that that's probably a future mm-hmm. application to voice chat is using, utilizing AI and vocal recognition software as a part yeah. of it to also do stuff. But that's like, again, there's some pretty cool like possibilities, especially with AI like I've always wanted to. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a game changing and responding? Like NPCs changing their behavior based on what you say to Even them. Even better, 
they talk to you. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. NPCs talking to you because and like they communicate and you're actually having an open. So instead of dialogue choices that are like limited to yeah. three or four options, it's an actual like AI controlled robot that communicates with you that's as exactly if it were a real person. Okay. To get I got you. Yeah. yeah. And that's exactly what I mean. Like that would be awesome. And it also has its own inflections, implications, jokes, and emotion that's behind it too. Mm-hmm. That would it be can pretty respond. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, we already have chatbot technology that kind of does mm-hmm. that and it's getting more and more robust with each year. So like, yeah. They could easily implement that, not maybe not easily, but they could totally implement that into a really cool game where it's like, yeah. imagine Skyrim where you just, again, all of the NPC dialogue is just them talking to you. Yeah. And Over your headset. You. Like yeah. You hear it in your headset ear mm-hmm. as if yep. they were like voice and chat. And they respond to what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So if you sit there and say things like, oh man, person in Skyrim, like I'm checking my Facebook, hashtag lol. They could be like, I don't know what those words mean. <laughs> like, what are you saying? This weird spell language? Like, that would what be are these kids cool. saying these days? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they have built-in things, so they're mm-hmm. like, they also respond, kind of follow your lead. So, I think that, that's all kind of like again, that, that's not necessarily voice chat in regards to like using like player, mm-hmm. like player and player interactions. But I think that you could, I, I would love to see them use voice chat more yeah. with. Uh, maybe another future aspect of voice chat is applying it to VR, having the yeah. like three D positional like talking, chatting, distance relations with your VR headset, mm-hmm. and so you can see your friend in front of you who's not really in front of you, but in, vir- in virtual reality he is or she is, and you're talking to that person. But they walk away from you or go do something else. It goes back to my dream about how you can sit in a theater, a virtual yeah. reality theater, where you're with your buddies and you're watching your your screen and like you're leaning over and talking to somebody and you can hear them whisper into your ear, but the other people can't because of advanced technology. Yeah. So like that kind of thing, I could see it being kind of cool. And then you can apply that to the workplace, like play having conferences, big giant conference meetings. You were you don't want the positional audio because you want to be able to hear everyone the same, like a telephone conversation, yeah, but you also yeah. want to see their faces and stuff. So like using it in that kind of way. I, I don't know if it does that mm-hmm. now. I guess you could. That's yeah. pretty much what we do now, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it. But VR in a video game related thing, it like you take Minecraft, for example, where you have a whole party of people that are all off doing their own things, and you have someone in a hill over there who's like yelling at you. But you can hear it as if someone in real life were standing on a hill yelling at you. It'd be kind of cool. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. We don't really see that. No, yeah. There's like tons of applications for mm-hmm. it, and it could be. And yes, yeah, so often our future ends up with the VR discussion, which is fine, which is it great because it just means that we get to think more and more about what VR will look like, yeah, and flesh it out and help spark your imagination, get mm-hmm. you excited for it too. But cool. Well, let us know what your thoughts are on VoIP, on Voice over IP, and how it's been utilized with games. If you have any fun stories about um voice over ip like any fun times that you had with friends or with random people i will voice whet chat. your appetite with a fun story yeah do it do a it. person showed up at my house in person when <laughs> i was playing a video game with two other people okay so the people i was playing a game with we'll call them person a and person b yeah and the person that showed up is person c Oh, uh, I think I know this story. Okay. Yeah, so ahead. I'm playing games with person A and B, and we're having an online VoIP session, and we're playing a game together, and we're all chatting and talking. The moment person C comes over, I say, hey, guys, person C is here, and they start talking poorly about person <laughs> C. I unplug my microphone as part of the process for logging oh, off. Oh, no. And their voice is now through my speakers for everyone to hear so person c stands at my house and listens to persons a and b trash trash talk this person and it was for me i was kind of a bystander i was like i all i said was hey this person's coming over i'm getting off so i can go hang out and a and b just go nuts and talk about this person and i'm like uh of course, person C says, don't turn it off. Of course, of <laughs> yeah, course, he wants yeah. to hear everything that they have to say about him. And so that just led down a giant string Ooh. of drama. And I, I think it's a pretty funny story. Yeah, I, I have my own little one, too, to whet your appetite. I, uh, <laughs> it's embarrassing, too, because the most embarrassing part of the story is I had push and talk set up. Yeah. Uh, so oh, this wasn't yeah. like a cop, but, but I was, uh, it was like, when I was living at home, I was high school. So, you know, I had all kinds of various hormonal, emotional issues, not that bad not I, I came off pretty unscathed as a kid but had a little bit of, like it's always been common to yell in my family let me put it that way <laughs> okay so at one point i'm playing wild with some friends and we're just talking chatting and my family starts bugging me to come down to dinner join them for dinner 
or something. I don't remember what exactly it was, but someone kept calling for me, and I heard it. You know, again, they were just down at the bottom of the stairs going, hey, Dan, Dan, Dan. And I, I like, I, I don't know, I was just in the habit of pushing down the push yep. to talk whenever I start talking. So I pushed the push to talk, and I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> blaring just super like loud. as loud as i could and like i knew i made a mistake when i hear people on like whoever was in the middle of talking in the voice chat was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> i was super embarrassed about it so that was my <laughs> embarrassing voice i was talking really. to my family it wasn't yeah. for you yeah it was like i'm sorry guys i'm so sorry that i had sorry that you had to hear that outburst <laughs> yep but, um yeah, so uh, yeah, so we want to hear those same stories. We want to hear your funny stories or or whatever, or just your thoughts on VoIP in general. How do you think that it's changed it? So, Termite, where can they share their stories? Go to the first place you can go to is 80bitpodsmash.com. That's our landing website. We have links to all of our social media there, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. We have a subreddit, 80bitpodsmash. Everything is 80bitpodsmash, 80bit podsmash. That's our, you know, add us on Twitter, go to our subreddit, go to our Facebook page, like us there. We interact everywhere. I post things on Twitter regularly. I post on Instagram. But if you want to start a conversation, uh, Reddit's probably your best bet. So yep. go there and you can start your own threads. If you cannot, let me know as the administrator. There could be permissions. As far as I know, it's open form. Anyone yep. can post anything uh, with the automated AI bot that will you know, do the, the automated uh, moderation okay. and stuff. Yep. But uh, outside of that, go there and start a discussion. Like, share us. Please share us with your friends. That'd be awesome. Uh, if you even feel so inclined to go to iTunes and leave us a review, that's mm-hmm. the best thing you can do for us because that'll get us bubbled up to new people who are searching for new video game podcasts. Yeah, one bit of homework I have is we've had a little bit of a boom in listeners recently. Yeah. And it's great. We're super happy and we're glad you're here. We want to know if you're new. Like, so if you can just, sh- if you're here listening to this episode and you are like recently started listening to us, yeah. Shout us, shout out, shout out, uh, uh, yeah. Shout, 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 <laughs> shout, 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 uh, on social media <laughs> somewhere. Uh, Twitter, so Twitter, uh, at one of those places he told us, he told yep. you just now. Uh, just say, hey guys, I'm new and love your show or hate your show and hate everything you stand for, but I'm new yeah. and started listening to you recently, so I want to trash you. That's fine too. Just let, let us know if you're a new listener because we want to hear from mm-hmm. you. Say hi. We like it when people say hi. Yeah, and so. we're located on every podcast service you can think of, and if there is one, like Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Google Play, iTunes, we're everywhere, and if there's somewhere you want us to be and we're not, I need to know so I can put us there. So that we can we can say that we're on every podcast service, every single one. Because I can't well, say that right now because no. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Anyways, well, we are where gaming goes to grab a beer. So just make sure you grab yourself a cold one sometime this week. And until then, when we will be talking about, I can't pull up Evernote because it's broken. What is our next topic? As we stumble over is, this, is that, like, is that, is I think that, it's a beer pairing. No, it's. No, it's a genre deep dive. Oh, yeah, we're doing a genre deep dive on racing games. Racing games. We're going to talk a lot about Mario Kart next week. And Forza and Gran Turismo. Yeah, and, and what's that wave rash. racing game? Wave race. Wave race. Literally, <laughs> yep. And a little bit of off-road. Yeah. And a little bit of Cruising USA. For sure. And a little bit of Drive Club. Kitty Kong Racing. Yeah, all yeah, those games. There's so, so many. We'll look forward to talking about that with you all next week. See you next week.